Welcome to Mrs. V's Reading Corner, where you can enjoy books for educational, fun, or even bedtime stories. Please take the time to like this video, comment below with how you enjoyed it, book suggestions, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the new books that I post first. Letters Home from Your Yosemite by Lisa Helverson. Arrival in San Francisco. As our plane touched down in San Francisco, I knew we were in for an exciting vacation. I'd been reading about Yosemite on the plane. I learned that it is America's third national park. Yosemite is known throughout the world for its amazing scenery. It has incredible waterfalls, rock formations, alpine lakes and meadows, and a giant sequoia trees. It's located in the east central part of California and covers 1,170 square miles. That's an area about the size of Roe Island. Efforts to protect the wilderness around Yosemite began in 1864. That's when President Abraham Lincoln signed the Yosemite Grant deeding the land to California. Yosemite was finally established as a national park on October 1, 1890 by the Act of Congress. Topography Our tour guide said that one of the first people to visit this area was John Murr, a Scottish nationalist. He fought hard to convince the U.S. government to preserve Yosemite as a national park. The name supposedly comes from the Indian name Yohimiti, that means grizzly bear. Yosemite is right in the middle of the Sierra Nevada mountains. These mountains stretch for 430 miles along California's eastern border. These mountains stretch for 430 miles along California's eastern border. The area covers 15.5 million acres, which is about the size of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Connecticut combined. This is the highest and longest single continuous range of mountains in the lower 48 states, not including Alaska and Hawaii. Native Americans were the first people to live in Yosinami about 7,000 to 10,000 years ago. When explorers arrived at Yosemite Valley in the 1830s and 1840s, Southern Sierra Miwok Indians were living there. They called the Yosemite Valley Hawani, a place of the gapping mouth. Badger Pass the first tourists arrived in 1855. They traveled on horseback. I wonder if they were as amazed as I am by the first glimpse of this scenic park. Today, more than 3.5 million people visit the park every year. Most come in the summer months. That's a lot of visitors and a lot of cars. But what's nice is that 94% of the park has been designated as wilderness. These areas can only be reached by foot or on horseback. After a four hour drive from San Francisco, we arrived at the Ark Rock Entrance Station. This is on the western side of the park, just north of Badger Pass. Badger is in a popular ski spot it opened in 1935 and was California's first ski area. Seven years earlier, the first ski school in the state was started in Yosemite Valley. That's where we'll begin exploring the park. Yosemite Valley. Yosemite Valley is only seven miles long and one mile wide, but it's where the most services are. Our campground is here, and so are many of the park's best natural attractions. It's the most heavily visited part of the park. Today, we learned about the Miwoks and Paiute people. 
and about the natural history of the park. Then we hopped on the shuttle bus to see famous sites like Yosemite Falls, El Captain, and Happy Isles. One of my favorite places was Mirror Lake, where we saw Tanaya Cannon reflected in the water. Bridalvale Creek Valley. It seemed that wherever we looked, there's something bigger, higher, and more impressive than before. More than half of America's highest waterfalls are found in Yosemite. One of the prettiest is Bridalvale Fall. It is located near the entrance to Yosemite Valley. The Amanichi called Bridalvale Fall Pahono. It means spirit of the puffing wind. Sometimes hard winds actually blow the fall sideways. I'm glad I brought my raincoat because we got soaked by the spray on the way up. This waterfall is 620 feet high. That's as tall as a 62 story building. Giant sequoias. I saw a grizzly giant. No, it's not a huge person. It's an enormous sequoia tree. It's the largest species of tree in the world and is found only on the western slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains. A sequoia tree can grow to over 300 feet tall and 40 feet around and can live more than 3,000 years. At about 2,700 years old, the grizzly giant is the oldest tree in the park and the fifth oldest in the world. Many of the sequoias have nicknames like the clothespin tree, Siamese twins, and the dead giant. You can even walk through some of them. Yosemite Wildlife I'm so excited! This morning, on our way to Glacier Point, we saw a black bear and her two cubs. The young ones were as cute as teddy bears. The ranger reminded us how dangerous these bears really are. They have a very strong sense of smell and will rip open a tent or even break into a car to get food. That's why we put all our food and even our toothpaste and the bear proof metal box at the campground. An adult black bear can weigh as much as 500 pounds. The average size is about 300 pounds. Not all of them are black. They may be brown, cinnamon, or sometimes tan. Between 300 and 500 bears live in the park. We have seen a ton of mule deer since we arrived. They like to graze along the roadside and in the meadows in the early morning and late afternoon. They can be just as aggressive as bears when approached. Mule deer have long ears like mules. They can run up to 35 miles an hour and can jump 24 feet in a single leap. You never know it from looking at them. The park is also home to mountain lions, bobcats, coyotes, black-tailed jackrabbits, yellow-bellied marmots, rattlesnakes, and California bighorn sheep. Thousands of sheep once roamed the slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains. They were nearly wiped out by hunters, disease, and lack of food. A ranger said they were successfully reintroduced to the park in 1986. More than 240 species of birds have been spotted in Yosemite. Some of them are endangered, like the willow flycatcher and the great gray owl. Some, like the bald eagle, just spend the winter in the park. My favorite is a stellar jay, a noisy blue bird with a black crest. It will steal food off your plate if you don't watch out. I also like to watch bats swooping through the air to catch insects. Did you know that one bat can eat up to 600 mosquito-sized insects in an hour? Yosemite has 15 species of bats. These include the rare spotted bat, 
which has big ears and three white spots on its back. Glacier Point. The view from Glacier Point was totally awesome. It made me dizzy to look over the edge. It's 3,200 feet. It made me dizzy to look over the edge. It's 3,200 feet, a little more than half a mile straight down to the floor of Yosemite Valley. In the distance, I could see Yosemite Falls. I could also see El Captain and Half Dome. I like the way light reflected off the bare rock surfaces at sunrise and sunset, painting them pink, purple, and gold. The ranger told us that this is a good place to see peregrine falcons in flight. They can dive at speeds up to 200 miles per hour and catch their prey in mid-air. They nest in high places on very narrow rock ledges. El Capitan El Capitan is Spanish for the captain. This is the biggest single block of granite on earth. It is more than 3,600 feet from its base to its top. It's a favorite climbing spot for visitors from all over the world. It can take anywhere from several hours to several days to scale this rock. So it's not unusual to see people camped out on the rock ledges. The highest single waterfall on the North American continent is Ribbon Fall. It plunges 1,612 feet off the cliff on the west side of El Capitan. Yosemite Falls. Altogether, Yosemite Falls are the highest waterfalls in North America and rank number five in the world. There are actually three sections of the falls, one on top of the other. The total drop is 2,425 feet which is as high as 13 Niagara Falls. In late spring and early summer, so much water goes over the falls that you can feel the ground shake. By the end of the summer, the falls may be no more than a trinkle. In some years, they dry up altogether. Lyell the first person to climb Mount Lyell was John Tilston in 1871. At 13,114 feet, Mount Lyell is the park's highest mountain. It also has the largest active glacier. The Lyell Glacier, which clings to the northwest side of the peak. It is about one-fourth mile square. Melting snow from the glacier feeds the Tuolumne River. The river, in turn, provides water to San Francisco by way of reservoir. Today, the rivers and streams of Yosemite provide places to fish, wade, or raft. But in the past, people flocked to the water to pan for gold. While some gold was found, this area did not yield as much of this precious metal as the foothills to the west of the park did. Tioga Pass On our last day, we drove over Tioga Pass. It's 9,945 feet above sea level. It's the highest highway pass in the Sierra Nevada range and in all of California. Because it's so high, many flowers and plants that grow here differ from those in lower elevations, such as the Yosemite Valley. The trees are also small and stunt because it's difficult for them to grow at such high altitude. Wherever you go, high in the mountains or low in the valleys, Yosemite is truly one of the most awesome places on earth. The end.